Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovald and in this video I'm going to be going over some example problems on how to determine what the predominant intermolecular force or IMF is of a molecule. So let's get into this. So our first example is C2H6. So the first thing you're going to do for these problems is you want to draw the Lewis dot structure so you can see what it looks like and then determine the shape uh, and from uh, of the molecule and then from there you can kind of determine and see what the uh, what the molecule looks like and the polarity so you want to look at the polarity um, if it's a nonpolar molecule then the only uh, intermolecular force is the uh, the London dispersion forces um, and then if it's a polar molecule then you'll have London dispersion forces, but you'll also have dipole-dipole, but dipole-dipole would be the predominant uh, intermolecular force, even though you have uh, London dispersion forces. Remember, all molecules have London dispersion forces because all molecules have electrons, and you get that fluctuation of electron density uh, in the molecule. And then, of course, you have hydrogen bonding, and that only happens if you have a hydrogen that's bonded to either uh, oxygen, a nitrogen, or a fluorine, because those are the three most electronegative atoms on the periodic table. And because they're so electronegative, they they have an especially strong dipole, and so we call them hydrogen. We, we call that hydrogen bonding between the molecules. Okay, so let's start with number one. So let's draw a Lewis dot structure for this one. So the Lewis dot structure would be. Uh, the two carbons bonded together, and then the six hydrogens are going to be bonded to each of the carbons, three on each. And so when you're looking at this, um, first, when you're determining the polarity of the molecule, remember, uh, first you have to look at the polarity of the bonds, and then look at the shape of the molecule and see if there's symmetry and if that symmetry is going to cancel out the polarity of the bonds. So here, technically, uh, the carbon-hydrogen bonds are not going to be polar. Their their electronegative their difference in electronegativity is so small that it's pretty much uh, nonpolar. I think it, I think the difference is 0.4, and technically that would be in the nonpolar realm. But even if uh, we count that that tiny difference as still being polar, um, we would look at the molecule here and say that this, remember the four groups, we have four groups around this carbon, that's tetrahedral. We have four groups around this carbon, that's tetrahedral. This bond is nonpolar because remember it's bonding two carbons. So even if these were polar, um, the tetrahedral here and the tetrahedral here, that's symmetrical on each side. So that would balance out the any any polarity in the bonds that there would be. So this would be a nonpolar molecule. And so because it's nonpolar, the only uh, the only IMF or intermolecular force that's available would be the London dispersion forces. So that has to be the predominant force. So LDF or London dispersion forces. Oh yeah, what about number two? Number two. We write the Lewis dot structure for that. These three hydrogens are bonded to that carbon. So C, H, H, H. And this OH is bonded to that carbon as well. So the way it's bonded is O and then H. These are the hydrogens. We have our lone pairs on the oxygen. And so now we can see that there is, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, Lewis dot structure, we have uh, oxygen, which is more electronegative than carbon. So that's a very electronegative difference there. So we have polarity in the bond here. And so as we said before, the hydrogen carbon bonds are not very polar. They're, uh, they're counted as nonpolar or slightly polar, if you want to think of it that way. But there's a lot of polarity here in the bond here between carbon and oxygen. Um, so this is polar. This is definitely going to be a polar molecule. But notice you have hydrogen bonded to an oxygen. So even though this is a polar molecule, and because it's polar, it's going to have dipole-dipole interactions, which is 
the, uh, an intermolecular force. It's also going to have uh, London dispersion forces because all molecules have London dispersion forces. But because it has the OH group here, that means you have a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen. That's going to allow for hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest of the three. So the predominant one for this molecule is going to be hydrogen bonding. So it is polar. Oh, that should be nonpolar. Uh, it's a polar molecule. Uh, so it has um, ox, oops, it has hydrogen, hydrogen bonded to either oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine. In this case, we have ox hydrogen bonded oxygen, so we have hydrogen bonding or H bonding for short. Okay, so the predominant intermolecular force is hydrogen bonding for this one. What about number three? Let's draw the Lewis dot structure. So the Lewis dot structure for this one is, oops, that's, our phosphorus is the central atom. We have our fluorines as outer atoms. with lone pairs, three lone pairs on each fluorine, and we have a lone pair on the phosphorus. Now, so remember before that if you have four electron groups, it's going to be a tetrahedral structure, but notice that one of our, our groups is a lone pair. And so remember that this lone pair is going to repel these, lone, these pairs of electrons in the bonds. So these three bonds are going to be pushed along with the atoms to the other side of the molecule. They're going to be pushed away down. So you might think of it looking kind of like this. Oops. So you have your phosphorus and you have the three fluorines being pushed to one side. with the lone pairs. Fluorine is more electronegative, so the polarity of the bonds, the dipole moments are being pushed this way. So you have a partial negative, partial negative, partial negative, and you have a partial positive here, right? So the you have a positive side here and you have a negative side here. So the overall polarity is going this way. So it's a, you have a polar molecule. So because you have a polar molecule, you have dipole-dipole interactions as an intermolecular force. Um, notice we don't have hydrogen bonded to a fluorine. We don't have, so there's no hydrogen bonding. So in this case, it's a polar molecule. It's polar, um, but there's no hydrogen bonding. So this is going to be, the predominant force is going to be dipole, dipole. So that's the predominant force for this one. What about number four? Let's, uh, let's do number four up here. So we have NH3. So the Lewis dot structure for NH3 is similar to PF3. So there's the Lewis dot structure for NH3. Once again, we have our lone pairs on top. There, the, This lone pair is going to repel the bonding electrons here, pushing it down. So again, it looks something like this, right? You can think of it as being something like this. So again, the dipole moments are going towards the nitrogen, giving the nitrogen a partial negative. And here we have partial positive charges. So again, we have a positive and negative side of our molecule. So this is going to be polar. So this is polar. And we have hydrogen bonded to nitrogen. So remember, if you have hydrogen bonded to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, that molecule will have hydrogen bonding. So this one has hydrogen bonding, so that's going to be the predominant force, even though 
even though it has dipole dipole because it's polar and it has London dispersion forces because it has electrons, right? The predominant force here is going to be uh, hydrogen bonding, even though all three are present. So here is going to be H bonding again. Okay. What about number five? So number five, if I draw, I'll draw the molecule here. So we have H2CO. If you draw the Lewis dot structure, it should look like this. Right? So, oops, I forgot lone pairs on my oxygen. So the, this has polar bonds. So the carbon hydrogen bonds, again, are slightly polar. So um, uh, they're considered nonpolar technically, uh, but there is a different selection activity, but it's very small. So, but there's a huge amount of polarity in this bond because oxygen is very electronegative. So the overall polarity of this molecule would be that way. So we have a partial negative side and we have a partial positive side here um, as well. So here we have polarity in the bond. We have hydrogen bonded to carbon, but that's not going to give us hydrogen bonding. So again, you need hydrogen bonded to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. We don't have that in this case. So there's no hydrogen bonding. So the predominant force is going to be the dipole-dipole. Again, we have London dispersion forces, but those are going to be weaker in comparison to the dipole-dipole. So we, the predominant force is going to be dipole-dipole. So this is polar. It's a polar molecule. There's no, no hydrogen bonded to either oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen. So no hydrogen bonding. So it's going to be dipole 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 interactions. Okay, what's next? Finally, we have CH3F. So, CH3F, if I draw the Lewis dot structure here, CH3, so H, H, so three hydrogens bonded to the carbon with the fluorine also bonded to the carbon with its lone pairs. Once again, we have uh, these bonds here between the carbon and hydrogen are, again, nonpolar or slightly polar. Um, but this CF bond, the fluorine is very, it's the most electronegative atom on the periodic table. So uh, compared to the hydrogen, uh, compared to the carbon here, it's going to be a lot more electronegative. So we're going to expect the polarity in the bond to go that way. Again, these are pretty much nonpolar. So the only polar bond is this one. So we're going to have a partial negative. We're going to have a partial positive there. So there is polarity in the molecule. And so uh, also keep in mind that we have hydrogen bonded to carbon. But again, we don't have hydrogen bonded to the fluorine. So no hydrogen bonding. So this, again, is going to be polar molecule. And the predominant intermolecular force is going to be dipole Dipole, dipole, dipole. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go about figuring out what the predominant intermolecular force of molecules are. Remember, uh, you can have two of the forces, you can have one or you can have three, but the predominant one is going to be the strongest one. And remember that the weakest of these three is London dispersion forces or LDF. The strongest of these three is hydrogen bonding. And the one in the middle is dipole dipole. So the whatever one you have that is strongest is going to be the predominant one. Okay. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please, by all means, like this video, share this video, hit that like button right there, smash it, please. And of course, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. When you hit that notification bell, please hit uh, click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And last but not least, please put a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And if you've got any questions, I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.